What's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be doing a quick teardown on the all new Nvidia Shield. Now this is the non-pro version. As you can see here, it's the two version as I like to call it. Coming in at $150 with the new Tegra X Plus One processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM and 8 gigabytes of storage. Plus we have that micro SD card slot. I have posted a couple videos on this variant and I will leave links in the description if you're interested in checking out the performance. Overall, it's actually a really nice little Android TV. Unfortunately, Nvidia decided to install the 32-bit version of Android on here, so 64-bit apps like Dolphin will not install, so we weren't ever able to test those. But lower-end emulation like Dreamcast and PSP work great on here. We also have awesome 1080p and 4K video playback, be it streaming or from native storage. As you can see, this is an ultra compact design. After all, it is in a toilet paper roll, so they really had to slim it down to make it fit. And one thing that really impressed me was this unit actually has the power supply built into the tube. It also has a fan and a pretty substantial heatsink on that Tegra X1 Plus processor. Out of the shell, this thing really resembles a lightsaber. I'm not sure if they took design cues from that or not. So I'm going to try to take this thing down as far as possible. Up here we have the Ethernet controller board, or the Ethernet daughter board. This is connected to the main board with a ribbon cable, and it's sitting right behind the power supply. The main board's right here with the CPU, RAM, and storage. We have the power supply and our little fan. You can control the speed of this. You can either go to quiet or performance from within the settings, and it actually works quite well to keep this thing cool. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and get this Ethernet daughter board off. Just disconnect this ribbon cable here. And there are two torque screws that I need to remove. I believe they're T5 or T6. After we get these completely out, we can go ahead and remove the Ethernet daughter board. These are some pretty long screws here. But it's pretty nice how they designed this whole unit. The new shield does contain Gigabit Ethernet, and here's the controller itself. It's just a straight up Gigabit Ethernet board connected to the main board with a ribbon cable. Next up, we need to get this power supply out of here. And the ribbon cable for the Ethernet board is taped to the bottom here. I believe I'm just going to have to remove the fan and the main board to get everything apart. There's four T5 screws holding the main board down to this skeleton. And after we get those out, I believe we can shimmy this whole unit out. Yeah, the rest of everything is pretty much just clipped into this skeleton here, so you'll have to give it a little bit of a pry. I don't want to break anything. I would like to be able to put this thing back together and have it working, which I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do. So the outer skeleton is now off. It's just a matter of disconnecting this ribbon cable and the power from the power supply to the main board. And it looks like everything else uses plug connectors instead of ribbon cables, minus the Ethernet adapter. Pull that ribbon out. And yeah, the power supply will unplug directly from the main board. So this is actually made by LightOn. As you can see here, we have our two plugs to go to 110 volt from the wall. And then it converts the AC energy into DC, which is 5 volts at 2.4 amps. So basically what they've done here is implanted a 5 volt 2.4 amp cell phone wall charger into the tube itself, which is a pretty cool idea. Like you saw, this unit does contain a little fan here. Just uses a plug connector, and this will pull air from one side of the tube and blow it right over the heat sink, which keeps that Tegra X pretty cool. And as for this little backbone here, I believe it's just here really to keep the back cylinder in in place and hold the heat sink down. Because this is not secured to the CPU, it's actually on the outer shielding. And I've run a lot of tests on this little device. I haven't had any heat issues whatsoever with this Tegra X1 Plus processor in the new NVIDIA Shield. The main board is super compact. We just have our one HDMI output and a micro SD card slot on the bottom here. I would personally love to see somebody do a 3D printed case with this or even turn it into a TV dongle. Now it's time to remove the shielding on the main board itself. On one side, it looks like the shielding is actually soldered on, so I'm not even going to worry about that side. We're going to go to the top side, which contains the CPU, and you should be able to pry the shield off the main board. If you take your time, you shouldn't damage it at all, and you'll be able to put it back together. After a little time, I was able to get the shielding off. Underneath here, we have our heatsink paste. I'll be changing this out later on when I reassemble the unit. But I wanted to get it clean and show you here. We have the RAM chip, the 8 gigs of internal storage, and the new Tegra X1 Plus CPU. At the very top, there's also the Wi-Fi chip. 
So in the end, they did an amazing job putting this little tube together, but I would love to see somebody come up with a different case where we could disassemble this tube and place it somewhere else. One of the main reasons I like the way NVIDIA set this up is the replaceable part. So if your power supply goes out, your fan, or your Ethernet chip, you can always replace it fairly easily, as long as you can find those replacement parts. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I had a few people ask me to do a teardown, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a quick video. Overall, it's easy to disassemble, easy to reassemble, and there are replaceable parts in here. If you have any ideas for creating a different case for this thing, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in checking out some benchmarks and some emulation performance on the new NVIDIA Shield, I'll leave links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.